Hey everyone, welcome. About two months ago, I got this laptop. It's the HP EliteBook 840G5. And it's my travel companion since then. It replaced my BTO Xbook. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a couple of, well, I think rather interesting features of this laptop. And we're going to replace the keyboard of this laptop. So um, in a bit, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. But let's start with the specifications of this machine. So it's a 14 inch elite book from HP. It weighs 1.48 kilograms, not all that special. It runs a Intel Core i5 8350U. Standard, it has eight gigabytes of DDR4 installed. It has a full HD, yes, 120 Hertz IPS display with a privacy filter. So not only is the 120 Hertz quite special in this category, um, but the privacy filter is something special as well. Um, so if you don't want your neighbors to peek on your screen, you can turn the privacy filter on and your sensitive information will be only visible to you. So above the screen we find an HD webcam and HD IR infrared camera, which is Windows Hello capable. And next to that we have the microphones of course. Other than that, it has not only dual band, Wi-Fi, NXP, NPC 300 near field communication module. Now if you have a look on the interfaces, we can see some very interesting things as well. Um, you do not only have the proprietary connector for charging the laptop, next to that we we have a Thunderbolt or a USB Type-C connection for charging it as well. And that's the type of charger that came with this laptop. Next to that we have the docking connector. I have a couple of uh, slim docks from HP, one at the office and one at home. And this is how I use my laptop most of the time. And it's pretty convenient. Just plug it in and everything just pops up. The microphones, everything is connected. And yes, I do use this laptop for recording uh, videos like this as well. Uh, next to that we have the Gigabit Ethernet connection, a HDMI 1.4B connector, another USB 3.1 connector, we have a headphone jack, and next to that we have the SIM tray. If we move over to the other side, we have a Kensington lock, we have the fan exhaust, next to that we have a USB 3.1 connector as well, and we have the smart card reader. So those specs aside, um, it's time for us to replace this keyboard. It's an Azurity keyboard, and I'm going to replace it with a QWERTY one. The reason why it's an Azurity keyboard is I bought this secondhand off of eBay, and it came from France. Uh, I paid 500 euros for it. And um, this laptop standard comes with three years of warranty. One year has passed, so we have two years left. It's not all that hard. I've upgraded the RAM on this model as well. I went from eight gigabyte to 16 gigabyte. Um, the storage on this laptop is, well, NVMe storage, like you would expect. It's a Samsung SSD, just the M.2 slot, and that's all there is in this laptop. So without further ado, let's get this one uh, disassembled and install the new keyboard. So let's first have a look on this new keyboard. Uh, it's a QWERTY one. And if we have a look on the back, we can see we have two mounting points. So there will be two screws we need to undo to get the old keyboard out and the new keyboard in. Um, other than that, we have a trackpad. Yeah, that one's for the trackpad. And we have the backlit cable and as well as the keyboard cable itself. They are very fragile, so we need to be a little bit careful with this. Um, yeah, I have my screwdriver. There are a couple of screws we need to undo. Um, three on the top and two right here, one in the middle and two on the front as well. And we're gonna start with that. So with the screws undone, we have a pry tool and we're gonna lift the back of this laptop a little bit up. Like that. Yeah, there it is. And we're gonna lift the bottom cover off. So you can see I've installed a second RAM module and there's the 256 gigabyte Samsung SSD. So now we have a couple of screws we need to undo. Uh, one is right here, KB keyboard, and the other one is right here, KB as well. So going to unscrew both of them. Let's unplug the battery. Yes. So 
Now we know for sure we don't short circuit anything. Then we turn the laptop over. Yes. And now we need to undo the keyboard. And we need a little bit of space. Yes, we lift it up just a little bit and I don't know if you can see this but we have a couple of cables we need to undo here. So here we have the backlight cable, here we have the trackpad cable, well the little joystick in the middle and we have the keyboard cable itself. We're going to start with that. Yes, and the last one as well. So, those three cables are out. And this is our keyboard, our old one. So we do need to transport this cable over to the new keyboard. So we're gonna do that. Top of that. Just clip it like that. So now we have all the cables we need. And we're gonna install the new keyboard. Okay, so let's start with this backlit cable. Yeah, like that. And now the trackpad cable, or the joystick cable. I think it will be a little bit hard to see for you. Yes, that one's in place. Okay. Get it on like that, yes. And last but not least, the flat cable for the keyboard itself. Like that. And we get the new keyboard in like this. And before we're going to assemble it again, let's test drive it. Yeah. Then we turn it over again. We reconnect the battery. Like that. And now we're you know, powering it on. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. So the backlit is working, the backlight of the keyboard. Okay. So the cursor keys are working, the arrow keys. So I assume the rest of the keys will work as well. So we're going to power it down and we're going to make sure that this keyboard is in. Like it should, like this. Put the two screws back in that hold the keyboard in place. That's one. And that's the other one. Yeah, and with that done, it's time to put the bottom cover in place again.
Yep, like that. Yep. Make sure the rest of the screws are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, minus. And we can conclude that this is working. And the mouse pointer as well. So I think this is a success. So assuming was a big mistake. And turns out the letter G on this keyboard doesn't work as it should. Um, half the times I press the key and um, nothing happens. So um, yeah, that's a bit of a problem for me. So I've contacted the reseller and he had a couple of ideas of what I could test with this keyboard to get it to work. One of them was to clean the connector with alcohol. Did that and it didn't work. Uh, second idea was to remove the keycap of the letter G, and reinstall it again and see if that worked. Well, that didn't work either. And the third idea I was um, kind of amazed by. He, um, he suggested I should take off this keycap of this uh, fully functional keyboard and place it onto his keyboard. Well, that's not going to work for me. So um, I hope I can get a replacement for this. And um, yeah, I will uh, keep you guys updated in the video description if anything changes. The repair itself, as you saw in the video, is not all that difficult. Just take the time with it and yeah, you should be fine. With that being said, I'm gonna leave the video at this. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, you can leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.